Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice problem on polynomials from Poland Math Olympiads. But before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to all my members. You can easily become a member by clicking the join button on my channel. And again, thanks for supporting the channel. Now let's get back to the video. This problem, we're going to be finding a polynomial that satisfies this equation. I'm going to look at this case by case. So let's start with the first case, which is pretty basic. And that will be the constant polynomial. Because as you know, if the power of x is 0, then you have a constant polynomial, which can be expressed as p of x equals c. So I'm going to test to see if p of x can be a constant polynomial. And this is true for all values of x in the domain, which is usually the set of real numbers and sometimes the set of complex numbers. Okay? So if p is constant, for any x value, this is going to be true. Therefore, p of x squared minus 1 is also going to be a constant. Now, by substitution, we can go ahead and plug these in. This is going to give us c equals c squared minus 1. Notice that p of x is squared. And then from here, we'll get a quadratic equation, which can be easily solved, by the way. And the roots are going to be probably familiar to you somewhat if you know about Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, the golden rectangle, so on and so forth. Basically, the values are going to be 1 plus minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. And since c is p of x, in this case, we can write the solutions as the constant separately. p of x can be 1 plus root 5 over 2, or p of x can be 1 minus root 5 over 2. So if you plug this in, you're going to realize that these are indeed solutions of the original equation. Okay? Cool. Now, these are the constant solutions, but does p of x always have to be constant? Not necessarily. We're going to have to check number 2. Case number 2 is if p of x is linear. Let's go ahead and express linear polynomial as x plus b, but I'm going to have an extra condition which is a does not equal zero. And why do I include that? Because I already covered the constant case. I don't need to overlap. That's going to be a waste of time. Make sense? Now let's go ahead and plug it into our original equation. What does the original problem give us? p of x squared minus 1 equals p of x squared minus 1. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug in this or this for p of x, which is going to give me a times x squared minus 1 and then plus b, which is that. And then p of x is ax plus b. I need to square it and subtract 1. So can we solve for a and b from this equation? Looks like it's solvable, but let's give it a try. Expand it. And then expand this. And this is going to give you more terms, obviously. Right? And then kind of put this together or comparing polynomials. So in other words, the coefficient of x squared has to be the same on both sides. So a squared equals a. From here, you get a equals 0 or a equals 1. But remember, we just said a does not equal 0, right? So we have to cancel this case. And we can only use a equals 1. But is that going to give us a valid b value? We need to find out. Okay? How do we find out? By looking at the other pieces. For example, the coefficient of x is 2ab, but there's no x on the left-hand side, which means 2ab must be 0. If 2ab is 0, that means a is 0 or b is 0. But we just said several times, right? A can't be 0. So b has to be 0. And since a equals 1 and b equals 0, this kind of gives us a pair. But don't stop there because you still need to check this and that. So we also have another requirement that says b minus a equals b squared minus 1. And since we started off with a equals 1 and b equals 0, we can kind of plug this in to see if it's satisfied. So in other words, 0 minus 1 and 0 minus 1. Are they equal? Yes, the answer is correct. Therefore, a equals 1, b equals 0 will give us a valid solution. And we just assume that p of x can be written as ax plus b. So p of x equals x will be another valid solution. But what does that mean? We already found some constants and now we found that linear solution. And if you think about the original problem, you'll notice quickly that it actually satisfies the equation. That should kind of be obvious because if 
p of x is x and p of x squared minus 1 is going to give us x squared minus 1. And this is also going to give us x squared minus 1. So they're always equal. Make sense? Kind of, right? I mean, really, it does make sense. Now, what is the next thing? The next step is checking quadratic case. Now, do we need to check all the cases? No, not really. But I'll show you something. What if p of x is quadratic? This is kind of cumbersome and time consuming, but this is going to give you some ideas. And I can also give you an alternative method, which you can probably use after the linear, because checking the linear case and constant case, those are fairly easy. But the quadratic, you just have to do a little bit more work, but don't worry, I've done the work for you. So we can write this as a times x squared minus b squared, b times x squared minus 1 plus c. This should equal the uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, which is p of x squared minus 1. Get it? Now, if you expand everything, what are you going to get? You're going to have to arrange some terms, but eventually you should be getting something like this. Something like this. And then on the right hand side, you're going to get the following terms. Kind of hard to fit, but I'll try my best. And it didn't work. Never mind. So I'm going to put these two, I guess, at the bottom. Uh, x squared and I have the 2bcx minus 1. Okay, now when we compare the left hand side and the right hand side, we notice that a is equal to a squared, or a squared is equal to a. Again, this gives us a equals 0, a equals 1, but oh, I forgot to say. A does, oh, well, I didn't. Never mind. a does not equal 0 because then otherwise it would be just linear. Uh, there's no need to repeat it. Uh, so a equals 0 is not allowed. a equals 1 could be a solution we don't know yet but then we kind of check the uh, coefficient of x here there's no x on the left so 2bc is 0 by the way that's an easy case that's why i'm checking it this means b equals 0 or c equals 0 hmm that could be a valid solution and then i need to check uh, what else i can check i can check the coefficient of x cubed i'm not doing it very in an organized manner but sorry about that there's no x cubed here and you don't have to be very organized all the time you know it's kind of boring isn't it from here, we get a equals 0 or b equals 0, but again, a equals 0 is not a lot, so b equals 0 is a possibility, which means c equals 0 is also a possibility. But we got to be careful because we have to check everything. That's the fun part, right? So now looking at the coefficient of x squared, we have b minus 2a equals, what's the coefficient of x squared on the right-hand side? b squared plus 2ac. How nice. Now, what do we know? We know that b equals 0 must be satisfied. We're not sure about c equals 0 yet, right? Uh, we also know that a equals 1 must be satisfied. So by substituting those without messing around with c because we want to verify c equals 0. If c equals 0 is verified, we're good. If c equals 0 is not verified, we could still be good. I mean, we're going to check, okay? So let's go ahead and check it out. From here, if I substitute b equals 0 and a equals 1, b equals 0, a equals 1, let's write it here, and 0 minus 2, negative 2, and that should equal b squared v0 plus 2c. 2c or not 2c, do you see what I see? From here, c must be negative 1. Awesome. c equals 0 doesn't have to be satisfied. This is an or, by the way, because if b is 0, the product will be 0, so we're good. Make sense? Okay. c equals negative 1, but we still need to check one more thing. Oh man, this is too much, right? The constant terms, yay. So a minus b plus c must equal negative 1. Let's see if it's satisfied with all these values. a equals 1, b equals 0, and c equals negative 1. Is that going to work? Let's check it out. 1 minus 0 minus 1 equals negative 0. Uh-oh, it does not equal to negative 1. Too bad, c equals negative 1 did not work. This system is inconsistent. So there is no quadratic polynomial. What about the cubic? Are we going to try all the cases? No, not really. But you could probably do the following. You could try something like this. a sub n x to the n. a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1. Dot, 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 all the way down to a 0 x. I mean, I meant a sub 1 x, right? Obviously. a sub 1 x plus a sub 0. Now, Plug it into the original equation, that's going to be crazy, right? And then from there, hopefully, you can deduce something. But so far, we have three solutions, p of x equals x, and the two constants we just found. Isn't that cool? 
And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, maybe I'll see you in about half an hour on A plus BI, which is another channel that I have, a channel about complex numbers. Go ahead and check it out. And bye-bye.